So here's an interesting repair that came in this week. This is Josh's Martin, the Mini Martin LX series with the, uh, the HPL laminate top. These uh, came in for a string change, but uh, you can see uh, I'm, I'm sliding that feeler gauge underneath the bridge and the bridge is pulling up a little bit, um, almost 60 thousandths of an inch uh, on the edges. I have a penny there for reference, dimes in the middle. Uh, a little over 50 thousandths of an inch there. So it's just a matter of time before that thing is going to pop off. So before we change the strings on this, um, we're going to want to address that. So um, first step is we're going to uh, get the old strings off of there, uh, pull out the bridge pins and the saddle. Uh, please don't tie knots when you're, when you're uh, stringing up your guitar. It just uh, doesn't help with the tuning stability and uh, it takes longer for everyone to get them off. Anyway, so um, well now I've got all that stuff off and I'm going through with a really thin and sharp palette knife just to kind of get rid of, you know, just the little bit of remaining glue that's there. Um, so this is uh, the, the bridge. We're dealing with two synthetic materials here, okay? Um, the HPL high pressure laminate is um, what the body is made out of the, and the top. And uh, the bridge is also synthetic. It's um, they call it Mercarta. It's a polymerized uh, material. Um, so they, uh, both materials tend to have you know quite a bit of dimensional stability. But um, in this case, uh, you could see they just really didn't use um, a lot of glue when they were putting it together. I'm just removing those two little nubs there from the recesses underneath the bridge and uh, just scraping off the little bit of glue that's uh, still left on there. I'm going to sand all that down, get rid of all the glue, and then um, we're going to start uh, roughing that up. I'm going to use the end of a uh, scraper that's super sharp. And I'm just going to go through really dig into the surface as much as I can. Like I said both of these surfaces are really hard and really durable. Um, so we're just trying to increase uh, the surface area uh, that the glue, when we when we glue it back, um, has to hold hold these two things together. So like I said, um, even though both of these are, you know, dimensionally stable, um, the, the more common uh, repair that we see with these Martin HPL guitars is the uh, the bracing on the inside because the wood is a uh, natural unfinished wood which is much more susceptible to humidity and then of course uh, you have the HPL in the body and uh, that stuff you know basically doesn't move very much um, so a lot of times uh, the repairs we see on these guitars are the uh, the braces internally but um, I checked it out with a mirror everything looks okay on the inside so we're just gonna make sure we get this bridge right so now I've cleaned everything up I've scuffed both edges I'm going to dry fit it with some clamps I've put some tape around the outsides um, I'm gonna use a lot of glue um, I'm going to use epoxy for this, and um, I, I, I really do want it to kind of squirt out all the sides. I want as much contact as possible to help keep this in place. Now I'm just checking again with the palette knife, make sure that with the clamp on there um, that we're going to be okay. And just a little catch in there, but that's going to get filled in with the glue. Plus I didn't quite clamp it you know, perfectly tight. So now that's all ready, we're going to get those off of there. I uh, have those three throat clamps and those will tackle that for me. I'm going to mix up some epoxy and uh, use that palette knife to just kind of go over it, spread it like, uh, like you're frosting a cake, basically, uh, both sides. We're going to do the, uh, the guitar top and then we're also going to do the bottom side of the bridge. Um, I always keep that Q-tip there on the side um, as my indicator, okay? Um, so when I'm done with this, you know, I know I have about just under five minutes to really work with um, before this stuff really starts setting in. So I can go over there and I can grab uh, that Q-tip there and just kind of test it out on the cardboard and I know about how hard uh, the rest of the epoxy material is as so I'm doing that. I'm using just two throwaway uh, bridge pins to uh, guide that into place, make sure everything's fine. We're gonna start 
uh, get them in there, increasing the pressure on the outside. Uh, well, in the middle first, and then the outsides. Yeah, that's looking good. We're going to squeeze that, and uh, you can start to see kind of at the edges uh, some of that glue coming out. So I'm just going to grab uh, as much as I can. The epoxy actually cleans up really great on both of these surfaces because they are very much non-stick. Um, so after I get all that cleaned up, I can go ahead and remove my tape. And then we're going to... I mean, this will set in, you know, five minutes, it'll be tacky, and in about an hour, it's probably good to go. We're going to leave it overnight just for extra measure. So uh, just get a little cleanup done here, and then uh, we'll come back the next morning and uh, just check it out. Everything looked good, and now I'm going through and I'm reaming the uh, bridge pin holes. Uh, that's a, uh, a reamer that's tapered to the exact taper of um, our bridge pins. So we know that's good. The other thing I'm checking out, and see, this is what I'm talking about as far as humidity goes, even though the neck is uh, like a laminated lumber as well, um, it is on the dry side, so all of those, uh, the headstock has shrunk slightly, and we're just going to tighten all that up. Um, got it all strung up and uh, put up to tune. And so it looks like it's holding the tension really well. We have no gaps all the way around and uh, everything looks good.